Well hey guys, so there's been a lot of talk at the moment about E10 coming to the UK and how it's going to affect running our classic cars. Well, to be honest with you, a lot of you out there know I'm not just a YouTuber, I am actually a mechanic for a living. I'm a commercial mechanic for a living and I also work on these classic cars as well outside of doing my living. So for me, these are not just about pleasure cars they are a source of my income. So how do I feel about E10? Well, I'm not scared by it at all. In actual fact, I think it's a good thing. And I really do think it's a good thing because we keep saying to ourselves, we are a tiny bit of the market. You know, we are a tiny bit that affects the environment with the CO2 that comes out of the exhaust of our car. Yeah, that's true. But as a tiny bit, you know, we still make an impact and we still need to get ourselves to be more greener for the environment you know if we want to keep playing with these things we've got to get people off our backs about dirty cars you know and if E10 does that and makes these cars greener I don't think it's a bad thing now I know there's arguments about E10 I know you know that it's like out there people are saying well you have to refuel your car more times because it's going to give less of a bang Yes, that's true. These cars are, for most of us, a luxury. They are a second car. So if you have to refuel it a few more times with E10, so what? It's a secondary car. And if you're worried about E10, well, the government are giving the classic car world a bit of a breather. You know, they're allowing us five years on running on higher octane fuel. Now that's all I've ever run all my classic cars on because I believe that higher octane fuel is actually a better fuel to run on regardless. My TR6 has only ever ran on 98 or 99 grey fuel and I think it runs better on it, I think I get more miles back to the gallon, I think it's kinder to the fuel system and this is just my own experience of better fuel rather than supermarket fuel. These are luxury items, they're usually secondary cars. There are people out there who run classic cars as a daily drive. And for them, well, unfortunately, you know, you're gonna have to either bite the bullet and change your fuel lines to be ethanol proof and look at changing your carburetors and your fuel injection system to be an ethanol proof, or run on high grade fuel and look at stuff like this, you know, adding valve guide protection lead to the fuel isn't just for the valve guys it's also for the fuel lines most of my cars have actually slowly one by one been converted to unleaded because you know we've been through this problem before when cars went from leaded to unleaded and you know when that happened we learned that your unleaded fuel can burn out the valve guides because leaded fuel is there to cushion the valves whereas unleaded doesn't so you know we take the heads off and we harden the valve guides and put the heads back on and just carry on motoring the same sort of thing is happening at the moment I know we're only a small part of the market but we do need to be seen to be making our difference to the environment the government do not want to get rid of classic cars the government know that the classic car industry is a multi billion pound industry they don't just want to wave bonjour to it Classic car companies like TRGB, Revington, etc, etc, aren't just going to shut up shop because E10 is coming into the classic car world. You know, they're going to come over and start making ethanol proof fuel lines, ethanol proof injectors, TR6s, ethanol proof metering units, fuel pumps, etc, etc. The classic car world is not going to stop just because ethanol is coming in the fuel. You know, it'll keep going, we will develop you know, ethanol proof fuel lines for our cars and we will keep going and if we're greener out of our exhaust well maybe some of the environmentalists can get off our backs a bit and I think that's a good thing as I say at the moment I only run 98.99 grade fuel I know there's YouTubers out there that show you how to take the ethanol out of the fuel and my viewpoint on that is well it's not a bad thing if you like riding a motorcycle because you can do it However, if you take the ethanol out of the fuel by adding water to it and then separating the, the fuel from the ethanol and then adding this sort of stuff, you know, higher octane boost or something like that, you're not going to get the bang as big as what you would do had you just run on that ethanol fuel. 
I think for the time being, a lot of us are just gonna have to bite the bullet and just run on higher grade fuel. As I say, I do feel sorry for the people who are daily in classic cars, but unfortunately, again, either bite the bullet or update your fuel system. We've been through this before with leaded and unleaded. So, you know, we can go through it again with going over to ethanol. As I said, I don't think it's a bad thing overall, but be interested in your comments down in the comments box down below. Anyway, guys, as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.